Namaste. We are talking about uh, the conservation of natural resources in Nepal today for Nepal polity. Uh, today we have Professor Randall Kaich from the University of Washington, United States. He has been doing research and different kind, kind of outreach programs in uh, Nepal for the last two decades and he has been here to train the people, students, uh, park rangers, government officials and journalists. He has done a little thing uh, from the perspective of a single professor but uh, has done many important things uh, from the pros perspective of uh, uh, nature conservation in Nepal. So we welcome you, Professor uh, Kaiz, uh, for Nepal Polity, this channel. Today I will uh, like to talk with you about specific cases mm -hmm. uh, you are doing in Nepal uh, since last several years. You have been researching in, in Langtang National Park for last uh, few years. Uh, what have you, you been doing there in, the, in, in nature conservation research? Mm -hmm. Can you briefly sure. tell us? So my, the first trip to Lantang was in 2001, very, very short trip. Um, in 2002, our more formal, the start of our formal research and training activities, um, we were conducting our first field course, uh, 2002. While we were up in Kenjing, it was heavy snowfall, um, we were walking around down by the river plain, we happened to find some tracks, some pug marks in the snow. We took photographs because we were holding our breath for what we thought we were seeing. The, the pug mark of some wild animal. Wild animal. You were ex excited. We were excited because we had a suspicion for what it was, but we wanted to confirm it with our uh, experts back in the U.S. at the International Snow Leopard Trust. As it turned out, those were the prints, or as we say, pug mark, of snow leopard. 100% um, confirmation. It, it, it can be differentiated from the common leopard. Yeah. But again, we were elevations uh, approaching 4,000 meters uh, in deep snow. This was no question, snow leopard. That really was a start. Uh, of a lengthy study uh, on snow leopard in was Lantang. That, was that the first time uh, any scientist discovered a snow leopard in Nas Lantang? So, to the best of our knowledge, um, that was the first report of the presence of snow leopard in Lantang, wow. at least in, in recent history. I mean, um, scientific work that maybe went back 30, 40, 50 years, there was no record of snow leopard presence in Lantang. And so this was significant. Um, Great achievement then. It, it really was. It was yeah. and, and this, of course, was with my longtime colleague, Dr. Mukesh Shalise. Yeah. We were both together for the training program, mm -hmm. uh, and we were able to document this together yeah. at the same yeah. time, which was really, really an honor for me. Um, from that uh, finding, um, I went back to the U.S., uh, with uh, Dr. Shalise, we, we wrote a grant to do the first investigation, formal yeah. investigation of the snow leopard population. In, um, in Lantang. In Lantang. Yeah. And over the next three years, we, uh, we received uh, you know, uh, uh, funding from the Snow Leopard Trust, which allowed us to continue this work. Yeah. Uh, at that time, documenting uh, the range of the snow leopard, approximate population size, um, prey species. So it, it was it was an opportunity to really um, investigate um, a new discovery yeah. in Lantang National Park. Wow. Then, uh, after that, uh, you concluded to some extent, uh, not to complete the study, but to, you, you reached some, uh, some degree of uh, achievement uh, in Leopard study research in Lantang National Park. Uh, how Useful was that? What, what were the achievement uh, you right. get so far? So, um, it, it's sort of mixed, um, mixed results at this point. When when we first found the the footprints, the pug marks of the snow leopard, 2002, uh, and then the subsequent, the next year, 
over the next three years doing the survey work, we were finding um, fairly prevalent uh, indications of snow leopard throughout from Lantang through Kenjing and, and Lung Sisa. Um, we were finding scat, pug marks uh, throughout the area. In the last five, seven years, right, um, basically probably from around 2010 on, uh, we've noticed uh, a gradual decline in the sign of snow leopard. The local people also up in, up in Lantang are reporting fewer sightings. So this is a bit of a concern for us because what we were seeing in the early 2000s as, you know, I won't say healthy population, but a fair number, it seems to be declining in that, in that location. Maybe they're pushing further up the valley beyond human habitation. Maybe, maybe migrating in exactly. another place. Uh, it, it in part could be due to uh, pressure from um, increasing grazing uh, from domestic livestock. It could be a uh, decrease in the, in the you know, natural prey species, Himalayan ta in that region. Um, we're we're not, not exactly sure at this point, but I, I, I can, I think, pretty confidently say that we're finding less uh, physical signs of, of snow, snow leopard in that then, area. Then there is a, uh, an urgent need for the further study on that. I, I, I think uh, it would be very, very wise um, to continue monitoring um, and monitoring farther, you know, into the remote areas yeah. of, of Lantang. And that's pushing further north um, and in terrain which is difficult to navigate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, trekking is, is difficult in those areas. But, um, you know, for me, it, it still has been a real, um, well, it's been a real honor, but it, it's been, I think, a real success that we documented the presence. Um, and it brought attention to Lantang uh, and brought, I think, attention to the need for conservation, not only snow leopard, but wildlife in general in that, in that, in that uh, area. natural area. Then we have two points, I think. One is you, two people, Dr. Professor Chalise and you, uh, Professor Kaich. You two people were the first mm -hmm. scientists to discover, as far as we know, the uh, recorded right. documents. Mm -hmm. You were the first people to record the presence of snow leopard in Langtang National Park. At least in Nepal. recent years. Uh, in recent North, years. Yeah. Uh, we do not uh, find any recorded uh, documents before that. So we have to be confirmed that you were the first people. You were happy at that time. You were ex excited to find the new species mm -hmm. in Nepal. And now you are telling that the, the population of snow leopard is declining day by, years by years. Maybe yes. it is migrating to other places or pushed by different causes. Mm -hmm. And you, there is, there is, do you think then there is some, uh, some kind of effort from the side of government and other conservationists or scientific community? Mm -hmm. We can do something to, to uh, find out what ac actually is being uh, sure. going on there. Um, I mean, I think the, the real positive real positive side of all of this is that because of that initial finding of the presence of snow leopard in Lantang, um, um, a number of the really major conservation NGOs that have um, presence here in Nepal um, turned their attention to uh, studying the snow leopard in, in the park and that again brings attention, uh, much needed attention to help with conservation. Um, the government the Department of Forestry, the Department of National Parks, Wildlife Conservation, um, have also been very supportive in, in wanting um, and, and, and helping really to promote this kind of research. Uh, very, very supportive in their granting permission and so on. Um, you know, of course, uh, we're all limited by funding and, and time, but um, the interest is there. That's, I think that's that's another a starting estimate. point that you really, you really need to have, that there is actually interest and support in wanting to promote this kind of research. Can you go uh, through some data 
can we have some uh, information about how many mm -hmm. uh, of the leopards were dressed in Lantang in the, in the beginning and right. uh, uh, what is the population of that species in that area? Can you go yeah. through data? Again, you know, th these are estimates and as I always tell my students, an estimate is just that. You not, know, it's, it's not a census. It's, it, it is absolutely not a census, correct. It, <laughs> you know, we were doing surveys, so a survey only generates an estimate. Yeah. Uh, in an area that large with, with such remote area that we are unable to sample in, um, you never know exactly, right? We, we're mostly in um, areas of human habitation to yeah. some of But that being said, um, it, in the early years, uh, 2003, 4, and 5, we were estimating in our survey area, which would go from Lantang up to Lang, Lang Sisa, uh, somewhere maybe five, six, seven different, different cats, different snow leopards. It's a small population for that area, but it's also not insignificant, given yeah. given how rare snow leopards are yeah. around the world. Yeah. Yes, uh, no leopards cannot have the population like that of uh, of common bark deer or, or exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We just don't we don't yeah. see that. Yeah. Um, and and part of that is a, a limitation of the available prey, but certainly you know due to illegal killing, whether it's um, you know, retribution for uh, by the uh, herders, you know, for killing yeah. their yak, or whatever, or for other illegal purposes. But, but um, you know, our estimates were in that range, based on based on sign. Sorry. So this is this is based on sign transect. So again, footprints are the pug mark, uh, the fecal, the scat. Um, we had in all this time, we had only one visual sighting. Of a, of a snow leopard. Wow. Um, even uh, camera trapping at that time with, with not that many camera traps, we were not able to catch uh, a photograph. But we did have one visual sighting, um, but mostly it was sign. And um, over these more recent years, again, we've been seeing a decrease in the sign. So this is, this is concerning. Yeah. So we have to have some uh, further studies and monitoring. Exactly. The number one thing for me uh, on any conservation program is regular monitoring. You know, a study that is done like a snapshot in one year and then nothing is done for maybe 10, 20 years, you have no idea what's happening in between. And, and regular monitoring for any species is so critical. But it comes back to the funding, of course. You know. yeah. Thank you, Professor. Again. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you very Thank much. You.